faithful forevermore You have done a great thing And I know you will do it again For your promise is yes and amen You will do great things God, you do great things
It's your breath in our 
you we praise you we honor you God for the breath that you put inside of us Lord we want to praise you we want to honor you Jesus we want to bless your holy righteous name in this place and online God because you deserve the praise this is the day you have made and we choose to rejoice in you God Lord our eyes are not on the things that are happening around us our eyes are on you that's on the throne, you're sovereign, you're in control, you know us by name, you are guiding our footsteps, we trust you because you're sovereign, you're God, you're Lord, you're our Savior, God we worship you, God we honor you today, we bless your holy name, hallelujah, hallelujah, just close your eyes whether you're here in this room or at home and just worship the Lord, I believe that God wants us to be a symphony of praise to Him right now. That from our voice, from the breath, the gift of life, the gift of breath, we worship our Lord, our Savior, 
our Redeemer. God, we worship you. God, we honor you. God, we bless you, Jesus. God, we give you the glory. We give you the praise. We bow before you, Jesus. There's no one like you. There's no one like you, and we choose to praise you. We choose to turn our focus to you, to exalt your holy name. We choose to, God, turn our countenance heavenwardly to look at you, God, and knowing, Lord, that you, God, are in control. God, let your kingdom come, let your will be done. God, in our lives, in our family, in our nation, in our world, God, we seek your will. We seek your plan. We want your purpose to be fulfilled. Hallelujah. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you. God, we know that you're coming as soon. We believe that's the next great event, God, that's going to take place, Lord, that you're coming. And we pray that we would be ready for your coming, Lord, that you come. You're coming after a, 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 your church, your bride. May we be spotless and pure. May we not have the stains of the world on us, Lord. May we be holy and pure and righteous, Lord. That, God, that we are ready to meet you, God. May our heart be pure. God, remove any of the impurities from this world that have crept into our heart and our mind and our thoughts. May we be, God, holy. May we be pure in your sight, ready to meet you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Cleanse us, purify us. Make us righteous today. Hallelujah. 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 God, we intercede, Lord, for our church family. Protect them. Keep them healthy. Keep them strong. Lord, keep sickness away from them. God, keep sickness away from our elderly brothers and sisters in Christ, from our young brothers and sisters in Christ. God, those that, God, have to be out and essential, Lord, God, protect them. We pray that you will end the coronavirus. We pray, God, for healing in those that are sick. And we pray, God, in Jesus' name, that you will just do a work. That, God, that you, Lord, would just be, bring protection, a, a shield around. God, everyone, Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. May our lives be lived for your glory and your honor. May we live to do your purpose and your will. Oh, God, may we not be sidelined, God. May we, God, not step aside, Lord. May we continually, uh, God, be vigilant in doing your will, Lord. God, even in a time of crisis, even in a pandemic, even in a time where our nation is in turmoil, may we keep our eyes on what you've called us to do. May we be uh, godly men and ladies that lead, Lord, that stand up and, and do what you've called us to do. May we be courageous and bold, compassionate and kind to those around us, God. There's a lot of people in our world that are, are, are God, just perplexed and don't know which way to turn, Lord. I pray, God, that you will anoint us, God, to speak truth, to speak the, the truth that you're sovereign, you're in control. And it's times like these that, Lord, we realize this world doesn't satisfy us. This world cannot fulfill us. Only you can, Jesus. And I pray hearts would draw to you, Lord. I pray that during this crisis, people would, would be drawn to you, Lord, and that, that they would develop a relationship with you. They would grow in their relationship. That, God, at times like this, Lord, that we would look at our own heart and make sure we're not lukewarm. We're not just doing what it takes to get by, but we're on fire for you, God. Lord, reading your word, praying, interceding, drawing closer to you, Jesus. Oh, God, we bless you. We praise you. God, bring strength to those that need strength today. God, touch Shirley Beisel and Dawn that's here that lost their mom. Strengthen them, Jesus. I pray for Catherine Wells. God, heal her as she recovers from surgery. I pray for Betty Hall, Lord, Paul Sandoval, Don, Dan Werner. Lord, strengthen these, God. Bring healing into their body. I pray for Quinn Freiberg, Lord, and, and Kalia, God. Heal them, Jesus. You're the healer. You're the provider. And we pray for supernatural healing, God. Strengthen our brother Clarence, Lord. Clarence Ames, God, strengthen him. God, serenity. God, touch serenity, Lord. God, thank you for the praise reports. Continue to give 
her strength. Thank you for John, Lord, that's here. God, continue to uh, touch John, Aaron, Lord, and heal him. Touch Leroy. We pray for healing in his body. We pray for everyone here, God, that needs healing and strength and freedom, Lord. God, bring it to pass. Do a work right now, I pray. Hallelujah. If you need God to do a work in your heart, your life, your family, lift a hand to the Lord and say, God, hear my cry. I need you, Jesus. I need you to do what I have been unable to do. I need you to transform. I need you to change. I need you to restore and heal. God, just move in this room, God. Lord God, I know you haven't given up on any of us, and you are able, God, to do what we're unable to do. God, strengthen every person here. Bring healing. God, touch Sandy Crawford, Lord. God, just touch her in Jesus' name, I pray. God, we intercede on her behalf, God. Lord, we pray, God, for every person here, Lord, and those that are watching online. God, do a work, strengthen. It's your breath is not love, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in not love, so we pour out our praise to you all. It's your breath in not love, so we pour out our praise, pour out. Great to see you here. Thank you for joining us online. If you're here, just smile and wave to those around you. <laughs> Praise God. God his breath in our lungs and especially this year we're thankful for the ability to breathe deeply amen Romans 13 1 says everyone must submit to governing authorities for all authority comes from God and those in position of authority have been placed there by God Proverbs 21 15 says when justice is done it brings joy to the righteous but terror to evildoers we don't want the 2% to speak for 98% of us. We don't want our silence to be taken as indifference. Family Worship Center has over 25, 25 plus frontline workers in the Sheriff's Department, DOC, Armed Forces, and the Police Department. Praise God for that. This weekend, we are celebrating our precious freedom, but over in Nigeria, this year alone, there's been 620 Christians killed. They've never tasted a freedom like we enjoy. Being in law enforcement is one of the toughest jobs in the world. On top of that, it's the mental, emotional, physical requirements of the work, which can be very taxing. We as a church need to pray fervently for policemen and women and others in law enforcement. They're in great need of our prayer and our spiritual support right now, especially now. They are the ones that protect us 24-7. Satan would love to eliminate those God-ordained places of authority. He knows exactly the kind of chaos that would follow in a lawless society without police. Not only should they not be eliminated, but they should also receive raises and more support from the government. 
Recently, we gave over 80 gift cards to our officers in the Sheriff's Department for a meal out. This weekend, we want you to take time to write a personal thank you note to them to let them know that they aren't forgotten. We have notes in the foyer for you to fill out, and if you're watching online, I encourage you to take a few minutes to send an email to the police department or sheriff's department or any DOC or those in the military that you know. Send them a thank you note. Make it a priority, each one of us, to pray for them daily. Remember all that is required for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. Thank you once again for your generous giving each week. You're welcome to give in the baskets as you leave out the door, or you can go to fwc.life forward slash give. Let's bow in prayer. Lord, I thank you so much for this weekend that we enjoy our freedom. It's such a beautiful thing. It's not just hamburgers and grilling out, God, but it has been paid for with a price and is continuing to be paid for with a price. Lord, we pray for our men and women who serve as police officers in the law enforcement and DOC and all of those different branches of our armed forces. Pour out grace, mercy, and peace upon these men and women that serve in this role in our communities, in our cities, and around the world, Father. Give them wisdom, discernment, patience, and grace. Lord, guard them from evil and harm. Give them supernatural grace, wisdom, and insight to do their job with excellence, understanding, and efficiency. God, I pray for supernatural protection over them every day, wherever they go. God, we praise you for just you establishing law and order. And we thank you, Father, for those that have answered the call as public servants. Thank you, God, once again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. I'm Ripley and I have a few announcements for you. But first, if this is your first time joining us, go ahead and fill out the little red information card located in the seat in front of you and make sure to drop it off in one of the offering buckets. Next Saturday at 8 a.m. here at the church, we are having our women's breakfast, but unfortunately there is no child care provided this month. We will be live streaming it though for those of you who are not quite comfortable coming back or have children and are not able to leave them at home. Either way, we want to make sure that you guys are included and we miss seeing each and every one of your faces. Already mentioned, do not forget to sign up for the Promise Keeper event. It is July 31st and August 1st. Our space is limited though, so go ahead and register and get more details on the link on the bottom of your screen. That's all I have for you today. If you notice my shirt, I'm feeling a little bit of independence to celebrate our 4th of July weekend. So I hope you all have a great 4th of July weekend. Be safe, have fun with family and friends. I'll see you all back here next week. Bye! And happy uh, 4th of July weekend. Thanks for being here on the 4th of July weekend. I know a number of our families are camping, but I'm glad you're here. And if you could turn that last roll of lights on also, that helps out a lot. Uh, I got to see eyes, make sure everyone's awake. Uh, but I appreciate you being here today. Hope you're uh, doing, uh, doing well. Uh, just an update on Family Worship Center through, for, through the uh, coronavirus. Since the 1st of, since the first of March, uh, we here in our church, we have about, about 2,000 people that, are, that call Family Worship Center home. Uh, although uh, before coronavirus, we were uh, running around uh, 14 to 1,500 on a weekend. But every, every month, about 2,000 different people have, have call Family Worship Center home and attend at least once a month. Since March, we've had three of our family members that uh, had COVID-19. Uh, two of them uh, had it in the end of March, 1st of April, and they're doing fine. One didn't have any symptoms, and then we had another one that had it in the nursing home. So we've had... Uh, out of the 2,000 of us, three of them, three of us have had COVID-19. I haven't heard anything else other than that, and and they're all doing well. Thank God for, uh, thank God for uh, that and uh, uh, God's protection. And I continually pray that uh, you are are doing well and uh, healthy. Uh, you know, it's it's kind of ironic. Back in March, none of us could could find toilet paper and yet it, yet fireworks are e illegal you can't buy them anywhere and the whole city was lit up last night where in the world did they find them I'm like man they it couldn't find toilet paper but you could find fireworks and I mean had to put earplugs in to go to sleep I don't know where they found all the fireworks but they made a way anyways 
Uh, we're going to do uh, something a little bit different this morning. It's something we've done for the last eight years here at Family Worship Center on 4th of July weekend. We join with thousands of other churches around America uh, in call to fall. And uh, it's something that pastors uh, all around America, uh, a number of them have agreed to, thousands of churches, that on the 4th of July weekend, we set aside a sermon and we spend time in prayer, praying for America, uh, praying for revival, praying for God to do a work. And, and this year, especially, it's important that we, that we pray for America. We need prayer as a nation. So we're going to step aside from our series on the Ten Commandments and take time to seek the Lord. And, and Call to Fall is done on the 4th of July weekend because it's a, it's a weekend we celebrate our independence as Americans, but it's also, as followers of Christ, a weekend we should celebrate our dependency on God, that we need God, that we uh, need to humble ourselves before Him, seek His face, uh, turn from our sins, and ask Him to heal our land. And uh, I believe that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And when we read in the Old Testament of how he healed, he changed, he transformed lives and situations, I believe God can still move in our lives in America here. So today is not a, a, a sermon. I don't hear any amens right there, but it's not a sermon. Uh, it is a time where we journey together in prayer, that we pray I believe it's the heart of God because Jesus said he wants his house to be called a house of prayer, that we pray, we seek God, and, and we call upon him. We ask God to intervene. You see, where we're at as uh, Americans, we're at a crossroad, and, and Wall Street is not the answer. Uh, Washington doesn't have the answer. I don't care what politicians promise what, they don't have the answer uh, because the issue in America today is a heart issue and only God can heal the heart. Only God can move and change in hearts and lives uh, where we could be where, what God's called us to be. And so we must pray. And God tells us specifically how to pray. And in 2 Chronicles seven fourteen, he says, if, if you want me to do a work in your land, in your nation, uh, that, that here is how it works. And it's an if-then statement. If you've ever uh, taken science, you understand the if-then uh, uh, concept. Uh, when I was a kid, my father always used the if-then. There was no then without an if. There was no allowance without an if. If you paint the house, then I will give you a dollar. Uh, so there's always an if then in my, in my father's mindset. And, and God clearly gives us an if then. He says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. In other words, I will hear their prayers in heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their land. God puts it on us as his followers that this is what we need to do, our part. You're like, man, what can we do to really help America? What can we do to really help uh, what's going on in our society so forth? God tells us specifically, here's our part. We need to humble ourselves. Uh, we need to pray. We need to seek his face. We need to turn from our own sinfulness, our own wickedness, and then God will forgive us and he will heal, heal our land. So we're not going to just study this verse. We're going to do it. And, and uh, we're going to spend some time in prayer. I'm going to lead you in prayer. Uh, I hope you will join me in prayer as we pray through this verse, if we, that we will do what God's told us to do. And so I want to begin and, and uh, with, with uh, the first one, the call to humility, uh, where God says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. It begins with you and I humbling ourselves. We're not peacocks, we're sheep in God's kingdom. And we are to humble ourselves. We are to walk in humility before God, to surrender to Him, to acknowledge our need and our dependency on him, to, to understand that we are not self-sufficient. We need uh, his uh, direction. We need his 
will, his plans. So many times our ideas, our opinions feel so right that we elevate them beyond what they should be and we become prideful sometimes in our own thoughts and, and ideas and we say this is what needs to take place. We, we need to humble ourselves in the eyes of the Lord and just lay everything at his feet and realize that we need God to intervene. We don't have the answers. Only God has the answers. Answers, And we need to take some time to humble ourselves. So I I at this time, if you could, uh, Ethan, just turn the lights down just to minimize distractions. And if you want, you can kneel where you're at while we humble ourselves, or you can just remain seated where you're at. Uh, if you're at home, you're more than welcome to kneel or remain seated. But take some time right now and just humble yourself in the eyes of the Lord. Just surrender to our God. Father, we understand that everything we have and everything we are is a gift from you. Nothing that we have, God, do we really deserve. God, all of us have sinned. All of us have gone astray. There's not one person here or listening today that has not sinned and transgressed outside of your laws and your commandments. We all have sinned and we all deserve hell. Everything else above that is a gift from you. It's by your grace. And God, we humble ourselves in your sight. We bow before you, Jesus. We acknowledge you as the Lord and the Savior of our life, our Redeemer. We lay aside self-sufficiency where we're trusting in our gifts. We're trusting in our skills and our abilities. We're trusting in our education, our know-how. We're trusting in our ideas, our opinions, our, our philosophy of life. We're trusting in our, in our bank accounts. Lord, we just lay all that false trust, the fool's gold, fool's gold that we put our, our faith in things that is, that is not true. And God, we put our faith solely in you. We trust in you. We don't lean into our own understanding, God. We lean into you and we trust in you. Oh God, we humble ourselves before you. We are nothing without you. We need you, God. We need you at this hour. God, we need you, Father. And our eyes are on you. We look to you, God. We acknowledge you above all. We acknowledge your sovereignty. We acknowledge your lordship this morning. God, may we be one nation under God. We don't want to be one nation under a political party. We don't want to be one nation under a, an ideology. We want to be one nation under God, where we understand your Lord and your Savior, and we all submit and surrender to you. I believe, God, if everyone, every American surrendered to you, that racism wouldn't be a problem. Hatred wouldn't be a problem because we would look at every person made in the image of God and, and they deserve dignity and respect because they're made in your image. Oh God, may we humble ourselves before you. God, do what you need to do in our lives. May we lay aside all pride. Oh God, we bow before you, Jesus. We bow before you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we're nothing without you. Oh God, we surrender to your will, your way. Jesus, you taught us to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So many times our will wants to be done and we just lay that aside and we want your will. We want your plan, your purpose. God, as men that are here, we humble ourselves before you. So many times, God, as men, we, we, we don't think that we need anyone. We're not vulnerable. We can figure this out. We can fix it. But God, we realize we can't. We need you, God. God, everything that we face, God, Lord, we need you, Jesus, and we humble ourselves before you. We submit to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we stay in the spirit of humility, one other prayer about humility is that to truly 
be the person we need to be here in America. We need humility. We need humility to be able to see those around us and love them and help those in need. Pride keeps our countenance up and we don't see hurting people. We don't see struggling people. We don't see the poor. We don't see those who need encouragement and prayer. We don't see those who are lost on their way to hell without the gospel of Jesus Christ. It takes humility to be able to turn our gaze down and see the needs around us. One thing that has challenged me is when I read the gospels and I watch how Jesus walked among us, he wasn't just going from point A to point B, he was always aware of the people around him and he met the needs around him. His gaze was toward the, those that were hurting. Micah 6, 8 tells us to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with our God. Can we just pray for that right now? Lord God, may we not be destination people that we're just looking to get from point A to point B and, and not even notice the people around us. God, may we not be so goal-oriented that we're just eyes on the goals and we don't see the needs of the people that we pass on a daily basis. May we not be so scheduled and have a day planner and have a daily routine that we fail to notice the people that are hurting, discouraged, depressed, that just need a word, need a prayer, need a verse, need a hug, need someone close to them. Oh God, may we walk in such a level of humility that our eyes are open to those that are around us. Our eyes are in tune to those that are hurting. That God, that we can see a widow, Lord, that just needs a, a, a family dinner with, with a family. That we can see, God, a, a, a single mom that just needs help with some things around the house. That we can see a, a fatherless boy that just needs to learn how to, how to fix a tire or shoot a 22 and, 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 and just needs encouragement. As someone who, God, is, has lost a loved one and they need someone to pray for them. God, may we walk at such a level of humility that we can see our eyes are open to the needs around us. Our eyes are open to those that are struggling that need hope, encouragement, that need words of love. They need the gospel, oh God. May we walk before you in humility, that we are nothing and we need you, God. Keep our, keep our eyes on those that are struggling, that we can use the gifts of your spirit that are put inside of us to minister and to build up others, Father. We pray, we worship you, hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we go on in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, God says, not only if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, but then he says that they will seek my face. Seeking the face of God is always correlated with seeking God just to be in a relationship with him. Seeking just to be with God. Not seeking something from God but seeking to be near God. Jesus said, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. If you love someone, you wanna be with them. You wanna listen to them. You wanna know them. And when God says, I want you to seek my face, he's saying, I wanna be in a relationship with you. I want you to come to me sometimes just to be with me, just to talk with me just to have a relationship, that you can hear the heart cry of God. God who has the power to do whatever wants to be in a relationship with you because you're created in his image. You're his sons and his daughters and he wants you to be near him. Can you just pray right now and just seek the face of God? Lord God, so many times I know I have to confess my prayers have just been, God, this is what I need you to do today. And I know you don't, you don't shame me for having requests. I'm totally dependent on you. I need you for everything. I need you to strengthen me. I need you to guide me. I need you to lead me. And you tell me to cast my care upon you. You tell me to present my request to you. And so God, I know that this is not to swing the pendulum to where we can't ask anything of you. You told us to boldly come to the throne of grace. But God, we also want to just seek you just to be close to you, just to be in a relationship with you, just to know you, 
just to have fellowship with you. May we get up of a morning and just say, good morning, God. May I walk with you today. May I know you. May I hear your voice. When we open the Bible, may we not just do it just to be able to check off. We read three chapters today. May we just open it up and say, God, speak to us through your word. We want to know you. May we spend many, uh, 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 a lot of, of our prayer time in just worshiping you and honoring you and praising you for who you are, that you are God. May we draw near to you. As your word tells us, if we draw near to you, you will draw near to us. May we just want to be near you, to follow you, to hear your voice, to seek your face. Oh God, give us that passion to seek your face, to be near you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just take a moment and worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Just seek his face and say, God, I just love you. God, I wanna know you. I wanna be close to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Lord, we seek your face. We just desire to know you. Thank you that you want to be in a relationship with us. That just boggles our mind that you want us to be close to you. That you're not just a God a million miles away and just left us to our own will and our own ways, but you wanna be involved in our lives. You wanna be included in everything we do in the celebration of our birthdays, in the celebration of of the 4th of July, our independence, that you wanna be a part of our lives. Thank you for that assurance and may we include you into everything. When we're around family and we're just thankful for what you have done, may we verbalize our thanks to you. May we brag on you when we're around other people. May we give you credit for what you truly do in our lives. Hallelujah. May we seek your face, God. May we seek just to be close to you. When we go home, may we not just automatically turn on the television or jump on the internet. May we just sit down and just commune with you, just talk with you, spend time with you. May we seek your face. Hallelujah. As we go on in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, not only are we called to humble ourselves, but pray to seek this face, but to turn from our wicked ways, to turn from our sinfulness, I'm as guilty as anyone else, and it's easy for me to point to the sins out there and say, this is what's wrong with where we're at and fail to see that there's times I do things wrong. There's times I've sinned. There's times I've had the wrong attitude. I've had the wrong thoughts, the wrong actions. And that's why God says, if my people will turn, the word turn there is the same word in the New Testament as repent. Repentance means turn. If my people will repent of their sins, do a 180 degree about face, then I will forgive their sins and heal their lands. You see, sin is death. Sin leads to death. Jesus Christ gives us life and death and life cannot coexist. One has to go, and we have to remove death from our life, which is sin. That if we sin, we need to repent and ask God to forgive us. Now, if you have sinned and you have confessed it to God, you've repented, those sins are gone. You don't have to keep repenting of sins you've already confessed. They have been erased and they're gone. But if you've sinned and you have not confessed it, you've not repented, you've not turned from it, then at this time, just take a moment and say, God, forgive me. I turn from my sins. Can you just right now just say, Holy Spirit, look at my life. Holy Spirit, let the light of your presence shine on me and show me if there's any sin in my life, if there's anything that needs to change, if I need to repent of any sins, if I've had sinful attitudes, thoughts, motives, actions, 
God, forgive us, we repent. Oh God, we pray right now, God, as individuals, that you will forgive us, that we would turn from our unrighteousness. If we've had sinful attitudes, if we've had sinful motives about our actions, and if we've had sinful actions, God, forgive us. Forgive us, God, we pray. Cleanse us right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we repent. We repent, Jesus. Forgive us, cleanse us. If you need forgiveness this morning, can you just lift a hand to the Lord and say, God, this my, my hand represents my acknowledgement. I need forgiveness this morning. God, forgive me. Cleanse me. Wash away my iniquities. Make me pure and holy and righteous in your sight right now in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, cleanse us, purify us, restore righteousness to our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to read from the book of Daniel together and I have the verse on the screen here not only is there a time where we repent individually of our sins but as followers of Christ there's times where we repent for the sins of our family and of our nation and the example of that is in the book of Daniel Daniel was a righteous man Daniel was a godly man Daniel was a man that that was pursuing God but yet his nation Israel was, was trapped in sin and they, they were getting deeper and deeper in a, in, in a lifestyle of sin. And Daniel stood up as a righteous man on behalf of his nation and he repented on behalf of his nation. And you look at Daniel 9, I wanna read verses nine through 19, different verses from that passage. Daniel said, O Lord, to us belongs shame of face to our kings and our fathers because we have sinned against you. We have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his ways. Yes, all Israel has sinned and has departed so as not to obey your voice. Again, let me stop right here. Daniel, according to the word, has not done any of this, but he, he, he stands in behalf of his, his land, his nation, and he repents. Verse 13, all this disaster has come upon us, yet we have, we have not made our prayers before the Lord our God that we might turn from our sins and understand your truth. O Lord, according to all your righteousness, I pray, let your anger be turned away from us. O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. I want us to just pray on behalf of our land that God would forgive us, that God would cleanse us, that God would heal our land. Can we just do what Daniel did right now and stand in behalf of America? Lord, God, we need forgiveness. God, as we read our history, we read our founding fathers, it is a fact that they quoted from the Bible more than any other source, any other author, any other book, any other philosophy. They quoted from the Bible. God, we even have on our coins one nation under God. But God, we have departed from you. Our heart as a nation has, has drifted away from you. And God, we repent. God, we need you, Lord. We see the effects of turning from you. We see the chaos in our nation. We see what's happening. And God, we're not looking at individuals. We don't fight against flesh and blood. It's the enemy, it's the devil that's trying to destroy our nation, trying to destroy souls. We're not pointing a finger at individuals. We see what the enemy's doing. He's trying to destroy individuals. He's trying to destroy families. He's trying to destroy our land. And God, we need healing. And God, we just repent right now. We repent in the name of Jesus. We ask for your forgiveness. God, as a nation, we pray that we would turn from our sins. God, we pray, Lord, that we would turn. God, forgive us of the sin of abortion. 
God, forgive us of that sin in our land. Forgive us, God, of the sins of drugs and alcoholism. God, forgive us of the sins of, of adultery and fornication, homosexuality and other sexual sins, God, that are just rampant, God, in our nation. Forgive us, oh God. Forgive us for greed, covetousness, self-centered living where it's all about us and we're not caring for one another. Forgive us, God, for being insensitive to those in need, those that are hurting, those that are struggling. Oh God, forgive us, Lord. Forgive us of the sins as, as a church, Lord, of being prideful, being distant, not willing to get involved. God, forgive us for lukewarmness, God, where we just do enough to get by spiritually. Oh God, set us on fire for you, God. Turn our hearts back to you. Forgive us for a self-serving perspective where we're just looking at what's in it for me and we're not doing what you called us to do. We're not serving and giving and, and, and standing up in courage and, and participating, Lord God. God, forgive us, Father God, I pray. God, forgive us for a lack of passion for, uh, to, to, uh, by not spreading your word, the truth. Forgive us for departing from the absolute standard of the Word of God where morality has just become relative. It's just whatever is right in our own eyes, God. Return us as your followers because, God, I read of so many uh, confessing Christians who no longer believe in the absolute truth of your Word and truth is relative today. Oh God, forgive us for compromising and caving into to what the enemy wants us to do, get away from the truth of your word that changes us, that brings us life and transforms us, God. Lord, forgive us for allowing worldliness to encroach into our lives, where we start believing the things of this world and, and, and we let go of the things of your, of your word, God. Forgive us for failing to lead when you've called us to lead. God, where we've worried more about what people think about us than doing what is right. Oh God, have mercy on us. Heal our land. Heal our land, God. Heal our land, Lord. Heal families, God. Heal families, God. May, may, may marriages be restored, God. We see so many homes that are broken and divided and crumbling. God, heal, Lord. God, our, our homes, God. Heal our families, Jesus, I pray. Heal our land, Jesus. God, we need healing, God. We need healing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And let's just pray right now for healing in our land. As, let's just pray God would heal our land. God, heal us, Lord. God, may we walk in humility. May we constantly pray. May we seek your face. May we turn from our wicked ways and that you would heal America, heal our land bring hearts together, remove racism, remove hatred, God. Lord God, I pray, Lord, remove the, the uh, addictions, Lord. Break the cycle of addictions in so many lives. God, bring great healing in our land. I pray for a revival. God, move, Lord, in our schools. Move in our places of business. Bring revival. God, we read about the two great awakenings in America in the 1770s where people, Americans, just started bowing on their knees, God, and turning to you, God. Lord, and then the second great awakening that started in New York City, Lord, in the early 1800s, God, that, that wasn't even started in a church. It was started in, in, in the business world where men started seeking your face. I pray, God, that, that, that a revival would start in our homes and would spread, God, throughout our nation. I pray for a revival. I pray, God, for our leaders. You told us to pray for our leaders. I pray for our national, our state, our local leaders, God, that they would have a hearts for you, God, that they would lean to you, God, that, that, uh, God, that they would lead out of, a, out of a desire for integrity and justice and truth. I pray against self-serving leaders. I pray, God, if we have any leaders, God, in any area of, of leadership in America, that they're there just serving themselves. 
I pray you would remove them and raise up godly leaders in every sphere of life. God, people who have a heart for you, people that are servants, people that are are based on justice and truth and, and righteousness, Lord God. I pray, God, you would move in that way, Father. God, I pray for revival. Revive us. Revive us. God, heal our land. Just pray right now, heal our land. Heal our land, heal America. God, heal America. Heal the division in our land. Heal God, the divide. Heal us, destroy coronavirus. Bring healing in our land, I pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, we believe it. We believe you're the healer, you're the answer. We look solely to you, God. We look solely to you, Lord. Heal us, God, we pray. We praise you, we worship you. Thank you, God, for this time in your presence. You are the air we breathe. We, with this breath, we choose to praise you. God, may we walk in humility, seeking your face, spending time in prayer, turning from our own wickedness and we pray God we will see healing take place bless everyone here everyone online give them a great day in you in Jesus name we pray amen amen praise God praise the Lord praise God thank you so much for joining us here online have a tremendous day in the Lord God bless amen